שלום, שלום. רציתי לדעת אם יש שיעור היום. לא, יש עוד שבועיים רק. עוד שבועיים? כן. בסדר, מצוין, תודה. היום אני בפרסות של צדק. בכל זאת, אחד צדק. רב חיים עזרא הכהן פאצ'יה, נאום את החלבן. בהיברו, החלבן אומר מלכמן. This particular Rav is known as such because for many years, he was just that. Working a simple job as head of a dairy factory, no beard, no payas, basic hat, definitely not what you would expect from a typical tzaddik or holy man. And as he carried on his modest work for years, very few people knew that this milkman was in fact a master Kabbalist and Torah scholar. He was a tzaddik nister, a hidden tzaddik. I'll never forget the first time I came across a piece of the Chalban's Torah. It was about three years ago. I was in my friend's wine cellar in Baltimore. From that first session, sitting and learning the Chalban's Torah, I was completely hooked and became utterly fascinated with this hidden tzaddik. I scoured Jerusalem's bookstores in hot pursuit of the Chalban's works. Each volume I acquired was a story in itself, repeat with its difficulties and ultimate triumph. I instantly realized that there must be something much more to this picture. Getting close to a tzaddik always has its impediments. The instantaneous one-click Amazon Prime paradigm just doesn't work when you're dealing with spiritual energies of this amplitude. Three years and about 10 books later, I have spent hundreds of hours poring over this tzaddik's works, and I've still yet to see him or even hear his voice. That is, until today. Okay, let's do this. So the word on the street is that the Halban teaches a weekly class to a small, low-key gathering of people in his hometown of Givat Ayim, a suburb in Tel Aviv. Today, I'm off to see if I can get a glimpse of this mysterious tzaddik. I walked out of my car in the direction of the synagogue, and I came across a religious-looking man who crossed the street. Could he be the Halban himself? Maybe a student? Okay, so, what do you know? so I need to add my phone number. My phone number into your into your WhatsApp. Y E F E T. All right. So I just spoke with Yefet, who turns out to be a close student of the Chalban. He confirmed that yes, there is a weekly class, but it's on Tuesdays, not Wednesdays. However, get this: he did add me to a WhatsApp group for regular attendees, but you're gonna think this is really weird. There's actually only four people in the WhatsApp group: me. Yefet, the Gabai, and this mysterious fourth number. What is this? Like, what is a WhatsApp group of four people for an entire class? This is getting more and more mysterious as we go along. Uh, all right, off we go. I didn't get to meet the Chalban or even see him, but at least now I have a time, date, and location. It's on. Next week, 4.30, I am there. It's crazy to think that a massive tzaddik lives in this quaint Tel Aviv suburb. You might picture visiting a tzaddik in the mystical city of Tzfat, or in the cavernous alleyways of Mea Sharim or B'nai Brak. But here I am, in ritzy North Tel Aviv, and the holy milkman is just around the corner. Before I show up for class next week with the Chalban, I'd like to get some more insight into this hidden tzaddik, and about tzaddikim in general. So I booked a date with my local tzaddik, Rabbi Yeshua Gerzi, the Pilsner Rebbe. I have no doubt that Rabbi Gerzi can give me some great wisdom and perspective into my journey in pursuit of the Chalban. Okay, I just uh, messaged the rabbi that we're running 10 minutes late. I've known Rabbi Gerzi for probably 11 years. Since the, the first time I met him, I actually, uh, I actually knew he was going to be my rabbi. I re he really is the source of my wisdom. When I need to go find out about something in the world, I get on the phone, I call Rabbi Gerzi. He's very accessible, and I'm, I'm really grateful that he's given us the time to try to learn more about the Chalban here. His house is just down here around the corner. Shalom, Rebbe. Have a seat. Oh, the good stuff. Have a seat. Oh, wow. Bringing out the single malt whiskey. A little shtickle, a little... Uh, you're going to get my sound guy drunk, Rebbe? Listen, 
It work, he will, he'll work better. <laughs> so after having a shot of whiskey in honor of Rev Gerzi finishing another book, we sat down in his private office and I asked him what he knew about the Khalban. The Khalban was born into a family of teachers and Kabbalists for many hundreds of years. If I remember correctly, the family, part of his family come from Turkey. And he was, at a very young age, apparently aware of his kaychus. There's a couple of stories that I know of. His father, in turn, was a tzaddik nista. His father was very close to a number of the tzaddikim of Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. And uh, the lineage, lineage went back a very, a very long time. And he, with his tremendous mind and very expanded heart, an incredibly humble persona, um, has been living his life for many, many years as a factory owner that makes cheese. I think maybe about 17, 16, 17 years ago, he became more revealed. Rabbi Gerzi said the Chalban was a tzaddik nister, a hidden tzaddik. I wanted to know more, so I asked Rabbi Gerzi to tell us a little bit more about these hidden tzaddikim. There's two places in the Talmud, one of them in Gemar Sukkah, and as well Gemar Sanhedrin, both speak about how there's 36 very interesting individuals that are sprinkled throughout the generations and they're individuals that they don't care necessarily to be known. They don't even know if they're Nifstarim. No one really knows. We call them the thir- one of the 36 Sadiqim, uh, but we don't know if they really are or not, but they definitely act like that. They're hidden and they're selfless. They're selfless and they have the deepest care and compassion. Egoless, no ego. As Atanya says in chapter 22, and as well 27, they're just pure vessels of God glow, shine, revelation. Wow. Selfless, egoless, pure vessels of God glow, shine, revelation. Sounds great to me. I asked Rev Gerzi, how do I find one of the hidden Sadiqim? <sighs> they find you, you don't find them. So I was standing outside of a synagogue somewhere earlier this year and I met this guy Moshe and we started talking and he started telling me some amazing, amazing Chalban stories that he had seen firsthand and he told me that he had actually got in to meet the Chalban a few times. So uh, let's maybe try to give Moshe a call, see what he can do for us here. Hey, Moshe. Hey, Yaakov, how are you doing? Good, good. What, 20 minutes work for you? 20 minutes should work for me. Okay, fantastic. We'll see you soon, Moshe. Okay, I'll see you in a few. Thank you. So we sat down in Moshe's living room, schmoozed a bit, and I quickly realized that his tone had dramatically changed. On the phone, he seemed so excited and forthcoming, but now he seemed hesitant. I asked him why all of a sudden he seemed so reluctant to share with us his experience with the Khalban. They say that uh, the Pearson, the publicity for Tzadikim Mastarim, it, it's not good for the Tzadikim. Um, and so even if I have stories and I have what to say, and it's true the Khalban is a big tzaddik, and it's true that he's a tzaddik nester, um, to start getting into the stories and, and uh, miracles, I uh, don't want to start revealing things that, that the Khalban wouldn't want to be revealed, and that would not be good for the Khalban to be revealed. I asked Moshe what he thought my chances were of seeing the Khalban. My understanding is it's become a lot harder to get in now, and it was hard enough back then, and uh, now it's even harder. I, I don't think you're going to have success in getting in at this point. Um, Although you never know. I wanted to know how Moshe first heard about the Chalban. Um, My Rosh Hashiva in Yushalayim has been very close with the Chalban for the past 18 years or so. Um, It started when my Rosh Hashiva was sick. um, And he... This is before the Chalban was, was known at all. Um, he was like very, very, very unknown, Mister at the time. Um, and the different tzaddik in Yushalayim pointed my Rosh Hashiva, actually my Rosh Hashiva's son, in the direction of the Chalban, and said, go there. And so my Rosh Hashiva's son went, you know, to the, to the factory. Um, and pretty much for a full week, he was out there waiting to get in. 
And every time he would go, he, every time he would, uh, he would uh, try to get into the Chalban, the Chalban would say, what do you want from me? I'm a businessman, leave me alone. I don't know why you're here. I don't, I don't know why you're coming to me. I'm just a businessman. I need to get back to work. Leave me alone. And he wouldn't let him in. And so Marusha Shiva son called this, again, I'm, being, I'm not giving names, but gave, uh, called this other Rav in Yushalayim, who was the one who pointed him towards the Chalban. Um, and he said, look, uh, you, you know, he's not, uh, the Chalban's not letting me in. There's not... And this Rav said, keep, just keep coming. Just keep going. And keep day after going. day. Day after day. And so it was, at least, it was definitely, it was a full week that he showed up and waited outside until eventually the Chalban called him in and said, what do you want from me? Right? And he says, my father, right, he's, he's been sick. Um, the Chalban looks at the name. Um, so actually, Moshe called me back after the interview and asked me not to reveal this part of the story. Sorry, guys. Looks like yet another stumbling block in our journey to get to know this tzaddik. But now, a week has passed, it's Tuesday, and I'm ready to go to the Halban's class. Okay. I used to be in this WhatsApp group, which was me, Yefet, who was this guy I met in front of the shul, and one other mysterious random person. And then for some reason I was thrown out of the group. Uh, I've tried to message this guy, Yefet, to see if the class is happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm looking at my WhatsApp group. You can't send messages to this group because you are no longer a participant. 054-84-3340 removed you. So what I'm going to do now is call that number directly and see if the class is happening with the Chalban. Shalom, shalom. Rutsiti Ladati Miss Yesha Shirayom. No, yes, not Shwaim Rak. Old Shwaim? Yes. Say the Metsuyan Toda. Okay, that was how, weird. How did he know your name? How did he know my name? That was not Yefet. Jafet is something different. This was the random person sending information about the Shir. <laughs> that was weird. That was really weird. Oh my God. Ojuayim, another two weeks we have to wait to find the mysterious milkman of Givatayim. It doesn't seem like I'm going to find the Chalban, at least not this time. But I did learn some valuable lessons along the way, and maybe that's the whole point. The, the powers come from vulnerability, no ego, transparency and authenticity and living in the moment. And they, they just are. You know, so many of us are human doings, constantly busy doing. These people are pure human beings. They just be. Like Rav Gerzi said, the tzaddik's power lies in their vulnerability, their ability to let down their guard and trust that things are going to happen the way they're supposed to. So maybe I'm not supposed to meet the Chalban after all. Maybe it's all about the journey and how I choose to respond to the world around me. So many people are running after more and more and more. The tzaddik says, am I being happy enough with what I have? And that's a question all of us can ask. Am I running after the next thing or am I happy with, do I respect what I have? How much do I love life? How much am I laughing? That's very, very, very connected to our everyday living. Very connected. I have to admit, this journey has taken me to a lot of strange places. And although I didn't find the Halban, oddly enough, I actually feel closer to him than ever before. I hope that one day when the time is right, I'll be able to finally meet this holy milkman. In the meantime, I have his books, Rabbi Gerzi's wisdom, and a whole lot of inner exploration to embark upon.